In the first episode of The Search for Perch on the Norfolk Broads, I headed to the River Bure in South Walsham. It was a nice evening, and even though the perch weren't making an appearance, things were going good and I was getting reacquainted with the drop shot method. The number of swims was limited, but I still had a decent amount of water to fish, so I was happy. Just I was getting into the groove, disaster struck, and my fishing session was unexpectedly cut short. My first perch fishing session of the season didn't go to plan, however things can only get better. If you missed episode 1, you can catch up on the playlist at the end of this clip. So now, it's on to the second instalment of The Search for Perch on the Norfolk Broads. After the disaster of South Walsham, the first thing I had to do was buy a new drop shot rod. Had the quorum snapper broke at the quiver tip or at the spigot joint, I would have happily brought another one. But as the snapper broke in two along the actual blank, I lost all confidence in quorum rods and decided to get a different drop shot rod, which ended up being an 8 foot Witchwood Agitator. For my second attempt at bagging a perch or two this season, I thought I would head for a quieter stretch of water and then ended up choosing Dillham Stave. Not least because I knew that if there were boats around, I could fish around the bridge where the boats couldn't moor or get in the way. Dillum Stave isn't very big, and any more than a handful of anglers, and there is no chance of fishing it. However, this is very unlikely to happen. Although there are anglers that fish Dillum Stave, it's not a popular place, so there is little chance of not being able to get a spot on the bank. Dillum is a quiet, peaceful village, and the Stave is usually the same. I say usually, because when I turned up, there's a family in a canoe with a very loud, brash and shouty son who thought it acceptable to yell and shout, throw apples from a nearby tree all over the place, and generally be a pain in the arse. I would like to say this was the only noisy canoeist that ventured up to stay during my session, however, I would be lying. The canoes were hired from Banks Boats at Wayford, and given the number I saw, I'm guessing the chaps working at the higher place suggest Dillum Stave is the place to go. I can honestly say that canoeists are seldom a problem when fishing the Norfolk Broads, but there are a bit of an issue in fishing Dillum Stave. The surface water around Dillum Bridge was full of surface weed and debris, however, I picked the holes in the weed and cast to them with a light underarm flick. I have to say the witch would agitate a drop shot rod was great in this situation and accurately placing the lure was no problem at all. First impressions of the agitator rod are good and I only hope it doesn't do what the quorum snapper did and break. I fished all around the bridge using a variety of lures and couldn't attempt to bite. As well as changing the lures I altered the depth I fished them and varied the rate of retrieve but I couldn't get a thing. There were fish in the swim. I saw the telltale bubbles and ripples, however, I couldn't say whether they were perch or not. There were a lot of small fry in the swim, and these were busy fighting over some large part loaves of bridge floating around, obviously left by a tourist. I was hoping the small fry would attract the perch, so I thread a silver minnow lure on the hook and made a few casts. However, my efforts were not rewarded. Since I couldn't get a bite from the bridge, I thought I would move to the other side of the stave and try my luck. This is the River Ant, which is one of the smaller and narrower rivers of the Norfolk Broads, and Dillamp Stave is at the end of the line. Being a small river, the River Ant doesn't get as much motorboat traffic as the larger rivers, but it is far from quiet. Once you get down this end though, the motorboat traffic is non-existent. You'd think this would be a good thing, but it's not. When a motorboat comes to Dillam Stave, you know that 99 times out of 100, it is there to moor up. And since these are BA moorings, you're going to have to give up your swim and move if the boat wants the spot you're in. Having to give up a fishing spot to a boat is one of the biggest annoyances of fishing the broads, and it really pisses me off. It's not too bad if you're lure fishing, like I am today, as you're mo going to be mobile anyway. If you're set up for the day to do a bit of roach or bream fishing, however, it could potentially be session over, especially if you're occupying the last mooring spot. The problem with fishing the smaller rivers of the Norfolk Broads, like the Ant, is they attract canoes. On the whole, canoes on the water aren't a problem, and most of them will try and avoid your line. However, there's always a small minority who thinks it's a laugh to purposely try and go straight through your fishing spot. I've never really understood the mentality of these people, and I never will. There will always be this minority, and to be very nice about it, idiots, and this is something you have to put up with. During my session, I tried my usual range of lures, the rubber grubs, artificial worms, various small shads, and the plastic minnows, but I couldn't tempt to take. I'm not entirely sure whether Dillam Stave is known to hold decent perch or not, as it is not my usual stomping ground, nor do I know any anglers that regularly fish here. Dillam Stave looks like a haven for perch, what with it being a quiet backwater with lots of bankside vegetation and a bridge to hide up, so I can't see any reasons why there wouldn't be perch here. From what I can see, there is also an abundance of small fish, which I assume are roach and other silverfish, so there is food here too. Even though I didn't catch anything fishing Dillam Stave, it gave me the opportunity to test out the Witchwood Agitator drop shot rod and how it works my Shimano Hyperloop reel, and first impressions are good. 
Despite being snagged up in the weed a few times, the agitator rod is still intact, so it seems to be strong. I just need to see how it behaves catching a perch. With this being the second perch fishing session of the 2018-2019 campaign, it is frustrating still not getting a perch in the net, but that's just the way fishing the Norfolk Broad goes, and fishing the rivers is a lot more unpredictable than fishing commercial fisheries. Whilst I didn't catch, it is nice just to be in the countryside and on the bank in such a nice place. The Norfolk Broads really are stunning, and once the summer is over and the kids go back to school, the boat yards will wind down, the higher canoes will be packed away, and the Norfolk Broads will be even better. All I can say is, roll on late September.